Joining me first via satellite uh, from Washington is John Bolton, former U.S. ambassador to the UN, uh, UN and author of Surrender is Not an Option. Also with me is Stuart Varney. He is the host of the Fox Business Network's Varney and & Company. And Daniel Hannon, he's a member of the European Parliament and the author of The New Road to Serfdom. All right, well, first of all, John, I can't believe that you're not with us today because um, I'm sitting here with two Brits. I mean, we're talking about America. Help me, John, help me. Um, John, let me start with you first because I want to talk about, uh, first of all, did I, did I get it wrong in the monologue that there are people that say China's gonna be the model, it's gonna be state-controlled um, you know, capitalism, um, America is gonna be a second-rate nation, um, and we have to globalize our government. Am I wrong on that? No, there are people who say that, and many of them were involved in writing this uh, report by the National Intelligence Council that you refer to. I, I have to say to start off, you know, we didn't need our government to write this report. We could have asked the Harvard faculty to write it, and they would have come <laughs> up with pretty much the same thing. You wonder why our intelligence agencies lack resources? It's because they're speculating about 2025. Uh, and another absolutely critical point, the country in the world about which our intelligence agencies know the least is America. And well, obviously, I think that's pretty much a on government on the whole. They don't know who well, Americans I would, are. I would go along with that. But, but my point is this report is written as if America is a spectator, uh, as if our decisions have already been made. And, and by the way, all of them congenial to the Obama administration. And that, that's the place I think we, we ought to start from because that's the place we ought to reject. Okay, so let me go to you, Stuart. Um, uh, we had a talk in the green room and um, there are two things that I wanna talk about. First of all, the path that we are on um, is to create that world. But we are the master of our own destiny. We choose every step of the way. Um, we, it doesn't have to be that way. But will you agree with me that we are on that path of being a second tier nation, maybe at best? The worldview of the Obama administration and of the president himself is embedded in that report. He's looking at the America that we have now, that he has partly helped to create with his policies over the last 18 months, and he's projecting that into the future, into the world. It's a future view which I personally reject, and I think we will reverse. But there's no question that report encapsules Obama's view of the world now and in the future. It is, however, reversible. Okay. Um, Daniel, there's, uh, there are those people, those forces here in America that are anti-colonialists. Uh, the president is um, believed by some, I'm one of those, to be an anti-colonialist. Um, you know, the, you, you, your, our wealth was ill-gotten, et cetera, et cetera. And so let's help the other nations. Let's, you know, keep the oppressor down and help the oppressed. Um, I think, it, personally, I think it's happening in your country as well. The whole West is on the ropes. And if we don't have a fundamental transformation of, of yes, we can, um, we're gonna live in a world of no, you won't. Disagree? Well, the night he was elected, your president made a very touching speech in which he said that the strength of this country is not in force of arms, but in its moral example. And I, I, I wish he would occasionally apply that. I mean, the, the great thing that made this country wealthy and free and successful was what you were talking about, about Jefferson's model of dispersing power, cherishing freedom, personal liberty, free enterprise. The, the, the great empires of Asia that we're talking about in this report now, they were the ones that became centralized, taxed, bureaucratized, the Ottomans, the Mings, the Mughals, and so on. And the, the, the genius of the West in general and the United States in particular, was the dispersal and diffusion of power. Now, you know, you can see where this is going. If you go in the opposite direction now, if you go down this road towards more centralization, federal czars, higher taxes, more regulation, you are repeating the errors that the Mings and Moguls and uh, Ottomans made hundreds of years ago. So is it any wonder that wealth starts to shift to where the enterprise is? Um, John. Um, you know the United Nations, and we've had conversations before about the United Nations and all of these NGOs and everything else that are, are um, they're laying framework. How close are we to having framework that you just 
don't reverse with 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 the um, with the financial regulation and everything else. I I, I don't I don't think anything is necessarily imminent, um, but I, we are we are at the aren't we at the edge here that you don't do much more lay more fr framework without really having serious ramifications that you can't well, reverse. I don't think. I don't think there's any doubt we need a serious debate uh, in this country about what we think of the concept of global governance. Uh, our friends in Europe are already well along that road and having uh, surrendered a lot of their own national sovereignty to the European Union in Brussels, uh, they're happily about the project of surrendering a little of ours okay. to transnational authorities as well. Okay, hang on, I want to take a break and I want to, I want to go back here to our own sovereignty and um, and global government and global governance. We'll do that next. Rachel quit the corporate grind to never be the same and it'll never come back and these jobs aren't gonna come back and everything else and we'll just beg for table scraps and there'll be a global government. Or um, we're gonna stop worrying about getting our ass kicked and start kicking some ass. And I mean that in our own butts. Let's kick our own butts. Let's start inventing. Let's start moving forward. Before we go there, we have to look at the reality of the global governance regulation and framework that's being led. Ambassador John Bolton is here with us, Stuart Varney, and from the EU and England, it's uh, bloody Daniel Hannan. Um, uh, welcome. Um, all right, so, so I guess Stuart, you, you go ahead. You start. Go ahead. Bring it on, brother. Because I think you... Do you disagree with me that there are powerful forces that want global governance? No, I don't disagree with you at all. I think you're, what you're missing and what we've not brought out yet uh, is that there's something going on in America. Something is happening which is rejecting global governments, government all the time. Oh, yeah? There is something happening. I can feel it. I've lived in America for 38 years. I feel something going on. And I think something is going to happen big in about, what, four and a half weeks' time in November. I think that will be a pivotal point. Now, if you're asking me about global governance, a fair question. I'm in the realm of finance. I follow money. That's what I do. Now, some degree of global governance, I have to tell you, and I regretfully have to tell you. No, no, no some degree is. Some degree of global governance is I, inevitable I have to tell you when you're something. talking money. This, is, this drives me crazy. This, the Tea Parties want no government whatsoever. Right. Of course, right. you just want the limited, the yes. least amount of government. The, yes. The, just enough government to make sure the wheels spin. But that's it. The most you protect. You protect and punish, you protect the good guys and you punish the bad guys. Yes.